So let, let's talk about this. Um, this is another thing that you had shared with me, these videos yeah. um, in conversation between um, Donald Abrams, who's an oncologist. And he's an in, he, yeah, he's an integrative oncologist. He's integrative, the, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's important. That's, that's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Michael Lerner, who's the, right. um, who's speaking on behalf of Commonweal. And um, Commonweal is this organization in California as a nonprofit uh, that are, they are organizing these amazing talks and retreats for cancer patients. And they're very much into wellness. Mm. Yeah. And, and you do work with Commonweal, right? Well, I, I met Michael Lerner when he came to Houston. He comes mm -hmm. here a lot mm -hmm. and he's an amazing um, speaker. Mm -hmm. you, you come across his talks. He's very interesting. And he's been doing these, um, how do you say, around the fire talks. Like, like round table. Or yeah, but no, there's not. Chats. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with um, people who have cancer, and mm -hmm. they can mostly, they're mostly end stage. I mean, it's just amazing job, you know, what he does uh, for over many years now, you know, like 10 or more, I think. Mm -hmm. So he's this a very interesting person to talk to. And I found out about Donald Abrams through a friend of mine who lives in California. Ah, the one who responded to our Facebook post saying this oh. is a, yeah. yeah. She's, um, she's uh, studying to become a nurse to help end of life cancer patients. She's oh, wow. an amazing person, yeah. Wow. And we were talking about these, this idea of compassionate cities where everyone is involved in the care of the dying and it's from a very compassionate place. It was just, and he mentioned to me, look up David Abrams. He's an amazing guy. Donald Abrams. I, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah Don, Donald Abrams. And, yeah, yeah. and I did, and I found out about these talks and he also talks elsewhere about um, the marijuana, the one people are talking about, the, um, the cure, you know, whether it's a cure for cancer or not. Mm -hmm. And just as a short answer, it isn't, there is no proof. And there's a lot of uh, studies that people are talking about that it is helping cancer. Well, there, according to Donald Abrams, there still isn't. And this is a very recent talk that I listened to. So I think it's mm. important to put it out there. Mm. Well, I mean, the videos I watched, I watched two of them. I watched the one on nutrition, diet and nutrition, and I watched the one on supplementation. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to watch the marijuana one, but the thing I liked about the diet, nutrition, and supplement videos is that they I mean they're talking about cancer but they apply just as much to anyone I mean anyone with a, a chronic health condition and I took some notes so um, what I'll do with these videos is I'll put I think what I'll try and do is I'll copy I'll just paste all the notes um, there as well as a link to the videos Mm -hmm. um, so for people that want to watch the, because Donald Abrams, he does a presentation in these videos and then they have a discussion. Um, and Correct. it's great. If, if people have time to watch it, great. If they don't, I think this is a, like the, the Cliff's Notes, you know, mm -hmm. um, this will give a lot of good information. Um, I That's great. So we can just sort of run through that and, um, and just anything talk about anything that um, comes up so yeah. comes up but um, so first thing dietary risks are the number one contributor to morbidity and mortality in the US in general um, and that means diets low in fruits vegetables whole grains nuts seeds milk fiber calcium seafood omega 3s and diets high in red meat, processed meat, sugar, sweetened beverages, trans fatty acids, and sodium. Mm -hmm. um, and that diet is probably involved in 30 to 35% of all cancers. Wow. And who knows how many other conditions. Yeah. Um, two thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. Uh -huh. um, and I think actually you live in the number one city, right? Uh, in Houston. Yeah. Um, and so body fat, uh, this is interesting. This is something re secretes something called cytokines that promote inflammation. And so increases in body fat may impair immunity. Uh, so too That's much fat triggers. Link. 
That's a yes. very important link. Why do we need to lose weight? Why? I think it's very important because when we're fat, we feel more, more bloated. And not only do we feel more bloated in the stomach, but our, our other organs get bloated or inflamed as well. And for some reason, this inflammation is linked with uh, malfunctioning of the immune system, mm. especially for autoimmune disorders. I think right. it's so important to understand this link. Yes, and also that too much fat triggers insulin resistance. Correct. Um, and and the is, scientists think there's a, I'm sorry to interrupt, and the scientists think there's a link between insulin resistance and cancer development. Yes, diabetics have a higher rate of cancer. Um, yeah. So, what? One more thing about the fatty tissue uh, yeah. for women. This is really important. If you have, um, they say if you put on more than 10 kilos, and I think that's around 20 pounds weight mm -hmm. after you've been 18 years old, mm -hmm. then you're at a higher risk for developing breast cancer. The reason is this. Even, you know, our bodies, women's bodies, secrete this, these hormones called estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. And there has to be a certain limit to those. And some, some tumors, some breast cancer tumors, they develop based on those, on those hormones. Nobody knows why. But even if you have been treated for breast cancer and you know, the cancer treatment stops those hormones, you take those pills, eh? the production of those hormones, the body fat somehow synthesizes these hormones. So you, your, uh, I think the aden um, adenoid uh, glands, they, they tend to secrete based on these fatty tissue, uh, they end up producing more hormones. So your risk of getting breast cancer is higher mm. or returning breast cancer is higher. Either because way. increased hormone production. Production through the fat mm. tissue. I think it's so important to know these. Yeah. And, and the, the, the thing is 10 kilos, like 20 pounds after you've been, you know, after the age of 18. If you put mm. on more than 10 kilos. And I think, you know, if you're on the cusp, like I am, for example, you're still at risk. Um, so it's, it's so important to understand what we're putting our bodies through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm going to go through uh, recommendations from the American Association of Cancer Research. And the first recommendation is to be as lean as possible without becoming underweight. Yeah. I mean, that is such an important guideline, isn't it? And it's so mm -hmm. difficult. I mean, especially where I live in Houston, Texas, it's like I have never seen such amount of fried stuff in my life. Right. Well, it's so difficult based on where we live, but it's also for people with chronic health conditions like me, you know, there's such a limited amount I can do in terms of exercise because the yeah. next thing is be physically active for at least 30 minutes a day. Well, I've got a vibration platform, which... Um, these, these platforms were designed originally for, um, for astronauts uh, to, you, you just, you stand on them and they make your um, muscles involuntarily expand and contract and they help with lymph flow and, and blood flow. Um, Is it like a power plate? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I can do that and water exercise is, um, I mean, I think definitely this is something that, that deserves a whole, you know, conversation in and of itself. But um, whenever I hear, I just wanted to throw this in, whenever I hear the importance of exercise, because you hear it all the time and being active for 30 minutes a day, it makes me feel bad because I know it's like as much as I try, as hard as I try with my diet, with meditating, with, you know, doing the vibration platform, it's like, I can't go for a run. I can't go for a bike ride. And um, there, I know there are plenty of people out there with different conditions that as much as they would love to, they're not able to be active for 30 minutes a day. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. And I can totally understand you. Yeah. So what are the options, David? I mean, for, for me, the, the option, I use this um, platform. Uh -huh. I, I, I got in... If an infrared sauna, because uh -huh. when I stopped exercising, being able to exercise, I stopped sweating. And because the skin is the number one way to um, eliminate toxins from our body. Um, so with the infrared sauna, it's supposed to help with um, uh -huh. uh, detoxification and inflammation and pain. And um, 
and then water, which uh, that's that's another key because a lot of people with um, health conditions that can't do regular sort of exercise can do ex can exercise in the water because um, of the the weight. There's no or the weightlessness. Um, but I'm not doing that now because I don't have a pool and uh -huh. I hate, I mean, going to a public pool, I don't like using public pools, number one, but number two, it's a lot of effort and energy. Um, so, but there aren't, there are things that we can do for sure there, but, um, you know, they're a lot more limited, uh, Again, depending on the condition, some people can't exercise because if they have chronic fatigue and they just, you know, they just yeah. simply can't do it. They don't have the energy or chronic pain or, um, so it's a, it's a big challenge. And I try and sort of focus on all the things that I can do instead of, you know, what can I do about the things that I can't do? I think that you're sharing this information is very valuable for people who have disabilities related to mobility. Mm. Because a lot of people don't know they feel stuck and it's, there's this bombardment of information like, get out there, do exercise. I mean, not everybody's designed to do it. Right. And as I told you this morning, it was very hard for me to get on this group where I'm now trying to do some exercise. And before that, it's torture for me. You know, I'm not made to do exercise. I'm made to do sit at the desk and to, to, to study. That's my inclination. You know, that's, you know, since I'm a child, that's how I, I was raised. And it's such a stress, you know, to, I'm not exercising. You know, what am I going to do if I'm not exercising? So in England, for example, people count gardening as an exercise because it does make them stretch and, you know, just move around and do something. And I think it's really important to understand that um, some physical exertion, whether you're lying on the ground or, or doing something, you're pottering in your garden or in, in some kind of water, or if not in your bathtub, something will help. At least yes. you will and, feel and like you're doing something. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, an important point is that it's easy to get frustrated and say, well, I can't do so many of these things. So yeah. what's the point I'm not going to do any of it, but um, we all have to do what's within our range. And sometimes meeting with a, you know, a physical therapist, someone who's knowledgeable can help with, with that. And, um, and expanding the, the uh, horizon of what we consider to be exercise and movement like gardening. And what, again, I come to the same point and doing it, from a place that makes me feel good rather than from an anxious place like I have to exercise I think it is such a big difference you know there's such a big difference in there like whatever you do don't do it because it makes you feel anxious if you don't do it do it because it makes you feel good that's the that's where we're trying to go to yes because that's when your immune system is really working when yes. you're in this anxious state, whatever you do, you do everything right. You know, I think that's not when it's really healthy. I mean, I'm sure that it's helping you, but it's not what we want. Oh, but you're talking about this is the importance of aligning the body and the mind. And um, I mean, the, the separation of the body and mind is arbitrary. But I mean, what you're talking about is really that the importance of our state of mind is... Um, it really matters. And if we're doing it out of fear, yeah. that's going to impact, that's going to have an impact on the results. And it's, but a lot of, I mean, almost every other woman I know is doing it from that place. You know, I yeah. have to do this. I have to do that. And it's just, I had so many cancer patients coming to tell me I've done everything right. I gave birth, I breastfed, I ate right. I never did. And some, and then I see all these men, and it's mostly men, I'm sorry to say. Um, you know, even if they get sick, they're like, you know what, you know, I'm going to be fine. It's like, if I do this, I do it because I want to do it. There's this self-orientation in men that is probably taught or expected. I mean, it's just enviable, really. Mm. Mm. And they fare better. They fare better in illness. I'm not saying they don't get ill, but they fare better. This anxiety is, yeah. yeah, it's, um, 
there is a study that was uh, done in Yale in 1990s, and it shows that people who are more self-oriented, and for you and me, it's the narcissistic ones, mm -hmm. it, they tend to um, have a better immune response for e autoimmune disorders, mm -hmm. but less so for cardiovascular diseases. Mm. And for people that are more others oriented mm -hmm. or anaclytic, if you like, mm -hmm. they tend to have a worse outcome in uh, autoimmune disorders and cancers, but they tend to do better for cardiovascular problems. That's interesting. Yeah, I can send you the link. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very powerful study and it's been replicated and it's been done. Of, of course, it's questionable the light studies are. There are always limitations, but it's really interesting. And I keep seeing it day in, day out in my practice. Mm -hmm. There's something about that. And mm -hmm. doing it from a, I have to do it. Oh, like when, you, when you're going to see your friend, do it because you want to, not because otherwise she's going to get upset with you. And that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that I'm talking right. about. Anything and everything. And I think with this conversation that we're having about diet and nutrition and exercise i definitely don't want to contribute to feeding to you know making people feel like oh my god i've got to do all of these things because the truth is is that you know educate yourself get the information do what works for you experiment explore it's not about you know taking every single thing and making sure that you do every single thing perfectly because again that, that that's not the spirit in which we're, we're doing this and um, it, it's, but it is important to educate yourself, to know, you know, that what we put in our bodies and what we do with our bodies has an impact. And why? I'm, and why? I'm, I'm also learning it new that weight gain is related to inflammation. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. I mean, this right. is the biggest takeaway for me from this. I never knew that link. And I yeah. always knew weight gain is bad for you, but I didn't know why. And right. I'm the kind of person who needs to feel convinced. Right. To do something. Sure. So, well, let, let's, uh, the, another thing is avoiding sugary drinks, including juices. And an, an interesting thing that, um, that they said is that, you know, basically juices have this, all pretty much the same impact on the body as colas because uh, it's not natural for us to be having the juice without the fiber. So, um, if you're going to have, I mean, that's why eating the whole fruit, for example, is a lot better for you um, in terms of your blood sugar levels than um, because the fiber helps to um, uh, helps to absorb and and sugars, metabolize. right? Sugars. Yes, yeah. yes, that's what he says. I think that's another very important point. Yeah, you know, juicing is right now very big in the world. People mm. believe like if I juice this and juice that, it's going to help me. No, in order to get a glass of orange juice, you need to juice maybe four or five oranges if you try to eat them you cannot eat four or five oranges you will feel extremely full and bloated right but you're getting the sugar out of four or five oranges which is i mean it's it is sugar sugar is sugar <laughs> right which is why also emulsifying like a, i we have a vitamix emulsifying the whole fruit or vegetable uh -huh. so that if you can you can drink it um uh -huh. Uh -huh. but you're you're drinking the entire including the skin yeah. including you know the pits and the you know yeah. all these things because there's tons of nutrients that there totally as well right. yeah so that's a really good alternative um but also when you would do that when you emulsify to be mindful of i mean there are certain fruits and vegetables that are higher in sugar and um and so you you, you want to be aware of that too yeah, yeah. um so Plant-based guidelines, a uh, healthy diet with an emphasis on plant sources, five or more servings of a variety of fruits and vegetables a day, whole grains versus refined. Only one third of Americans eat the suggested amount of fruit per day and one quarter of Americans eat the suggested amount of vegetables. Um, and organic when possible because, which means free of pesticides, preservatives, antibiotics, hormones, animal byproducts, and it's also better for the earth. True. Um, and there, there are different kinds of nutrients. So there are macronutrients, which is like, you know, the, 
the fat, the protein, and the carbohydrates. That's pretty much the same between organic and non-organic. But then there are the micronutrients, which are the vitamins and minerals, and the mm-hmm. phytonutrients, which are, are nutrients from plants. And there you see a big difference between organic and oh, non-organic. I see. Yeah. I did not listen to that part. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Mm. So Do you want to say more about that? I'm interested. Um, well, just when, when, when foods are, um, are blasted with um, pesticides and, um, or if they're, uh, another problem is that the, there's a grown in soil that doesn't have the proper nutrients because the land is just being over, depleted, uh, depleted yeah. and overused. So uh-huh. the, the, the vegetable can look the same and it can have on some level the same amount of nutrients. But if you think about it, if you're growing the fruits and vegetables in soil that doesn't, that, that's depleted, of course that's going to have an impact on, um, on the nutrients in, in, yeah. in the fruit and vegetable. Yeah, yeah, so true. Um, yeah, I'm, one thing I do when I'm shopping is, um, you know, most of the grocery stores now carry organic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, sometimes they don't feel real to me. So, for example, if I'm buying peaches, let's say, mm-hmm. or tomatoes, I just smell them. And if they, mm-hmm. I only buy, even if it says organic, I only buy them if, it, if they smell like the real thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they don't. I mean, even right. if they are organic, right. probably because they are put in these greenhouses and, right, you know, like grown with whatever um, right. nutrients. And just, it feels like I'm eating something plastic. And yeah, I mean, locally grown produce is certainly better because it doesn't have to be. I mean, in order to get, a, you know, something on a plane and and get get it to where that's not grown locally, you ha- it has to be picked well before mm-hmm. it would naturally be ripe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you're you're talking about intuiting just or using your senses to see does this feel uh, and smell. Uh, yeah. Right. Aside from being organic or or not organic. Right. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, at least. You know. And another good thing is is um, for me, it's like because organic organic fruits and vegetables are more expensive, right? So if you if you have a limited budget and you can only buy a couple of things that are organic, the uh, just a very simple way to do it is that the thinner the skin, the more important it is for it to be organic. So if you have to choose between a banana and a grape, buy the organic grapes. The bananas aren't as, you know, it's not as important. That's very smart. Very, very smart. And I read somewhere like, uh, for example, um, spinach is really important to have organic because it's on the ground and it it will be sprayed a lot. Yes. And the other thing someone told me was, even if you're going to eat everything non-organic, um, don't go for non-organic corn because corn is heavily um, genetically modified right. and sprayed because a lot of pesticides come to it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, pests come to it. Right. Um, so, and they can be quite uh, bad for your health. So try to go for, I mean, I'm surprised that in this state, in Texas, people eat a lot of corn-based meals. Mm. And it always gives me some uh, anxiety about that. Mm-hmm. You know, what are we eating? It's very scary. It is. And, you know, it, perhaps it's not a surprise that Texas has some of the highest rates of cancer in the, in the nation. Hmm. No, it's certainly, if we look at that statistic of the uh, 30 to 35 percent of cancers being related to diet and nutrition and yeah. Two of the heaviest cities in the country, Dallas and Houston, um, are in Texas. Yeah. Um, there's some prevention strategies too. Uh-huh. Phytoestrogens, whole soy foods like soybeans, tofu, tempeh, miso, flaxseed. Um, those are all recommended. Uh huh. Um, and again, I think you have to be uh, careful with tofu and make sure check that it's not genetically modified, modified. Yeah. yeah 
Um, well, soy scares me a bit because it does, again, um, for women, uh, soy is um, something that will, I don't know the word for it, but it will increase your uh, hormones. Okay? I thought that too, but this is, I, but th I was surprised, this is one thing I was surprised by, that, that, that they said this is, if you eat whole soy foods, that it's actually good for you. Um, oh. This is something that they talked about that Abrams uh, mentioned in his talk. How, that, how interesting. Yeah. I always thought that tofu increased, that my, my association was, oh, to, don't eat tofu too much because it increases estrogen. Mm -hmm. um, but um, apparently that's, uh, and I can't, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, no, that it's actually really good for you. Whole okay soy foods and again making sure that it's not genetically modified and um well in any case we're going to put the link to the video and if yes. anyone is interested they can listen to it to yes. him for themselves and yes. yeah and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli cauliflower brussels sprouts um those are really good garlic and onions turmeric and ginger um and organic japanese green tea Oh, those are all, okay. these are all sort of prevention things that are, um, recommended, um, to help to prevent not just cancer again, but inflammation and, um, illness. I, I ended up buying this thing from someone who's doing it, who started to do it for their family at mm -hmm. home. Like it's like a paste made with organic and uh, organic turmeric and cinnamon and some uh, ginger and some other stuff and it looks like this really rich paste and um, my son got uh, uh, you know just some kind of a virus the other day and he had a bad throat ache and I looked into his throat and I saw some white spots and I freaked out and I thought he's gonna need an antibiotic for this and he had a bit of a fever and then I remembered that I have that in the fridge so I took a, a, a big chunk out of it and mixed it with some manuka honey and some water and put some almond milk in there. Mm. I swear the whole thing was gone in one day. Wow. It has such powerful, you know, potent antibiotic qualities, turmeric. Mm -hmm. You know, I was so shocked to see. And, you know, this kid who's only nine, you know how difficult kids are when you give them something that's good for you, you drink this and they're like, it tastes horrible. Right. He told me, Mummy, it didn't taste so good. It was a bit bitter for me, but it helped my, he, he can feel it. Like it, it does help with his throat because I gave him some other medication before, like these things we give over the counter, you know, we buy over the counter and give right. to kids. Nothing helps. And this one was like, in an instant, it's gone. And the next morning he was able to talk again, like normal. It was, wow. like, it was like, wow. wow. So that's how powerful turmeric is. And everyone keeps talking about it. I know. Yeah. It's one of the superfoods. Mm. And they're not easy to, I mean, you have to make something with it. You know, you need to, it's not an easy, I mean, anyway. <laughs> no, it's true. It's not, it's not, turmeric is not as easy to incorporate as honey, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so. you want to have it as potent as possible. You want to like, right. you know, have it fresh and keep it fresh and do this and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more recommendations, limiting red meats and avoiding processed meats processed meats like hot dogs, bologna, things like, like that. Um, another problem is an absence of green in our diets makes us produce more omega-6 versus uh -huh. omega-3, which causes clumping and inflammation. Um, we need omega-6, but the ratio of omega-6 to 3 has gone over the years from 2 to 1 mm -hmm. to 20 to 1. And... Um, he said a big reason for this is how is eggs. Um, unless they're organic omega-3 eggs. Um, so, and that's another thing that I learned because I love eggs. And um, so just sort of, again, be mindful of the source of your eggs. And So we should eat omega-3 eggs, organic, uh, organic omega-3 omega eggs. Okay, it's good to know because yeah. I love eggs too and organic is enough for me. But yeah. now I'm learning that it has to be also rich in omega-3. Right. Okay. Right. So just being aware of the, you know, this, the, this, the change of 
um, the omega six to three ratio and the, when it's off, when it's, we have way too much omega six, that causes inflammation. And we want to stay, anyone with any sort of, anyone wants to stay from that, you know, there's natural and healthy inflammation. Like if we get a cut and, you know, it's our white blood cells are, are sending, um, thing, you know, blood to, uh, to that area of the injury, that's healthy inflammation. It causes, but it also causes increased liquid and, and swelling and, um, if that's happening, that's what happens a lot with autoimmune conditions is, um, is our body start, starts to attack itself um, mm -hmm. because it's sensing that there's, um, there's something wrong even if there isn't something actually wrong. Um, so we really need to watch out for, um, for causes of inflammation and increased inflammation. Yeah, maybe we can discuss why inflammation is so bad for us. So there is a, our immune system works in a way that if there is too much inflammation in our bodies, it stops fighting the cancer cells, the abnormalities in our body as much as it should. Mm. That immune response becomes weaker because that you know, it's almost like a car that is constantly running, even if it's, you know, if it's idle, you don't just turn it off, it keeps running. So your body becomes less responsive to what's happening. You know, your immune system becomes less responsive. To be able to shut it down, to still have that response, to shut down cortisol, the stress hormone, you should not be inflamed. And that's not an easy task as we're learning. Everything causes inflammation. Do you remember a great um, thing that Alexandra taught us, our nutritionist in London? Um, take a spoonful of linseeds and uh, pour some hot water on top and cover it up and leave it overnight. And then in the morning, just drink it as a whole. Like also mm. the linseeds will be mushier and they have this nutty taste. I mean, it's not the best taste, but it's not yucky either. And it's a great anti-inflammatory uh, thing to do. Are linseeds the same as flax seeds? Or yes, they, yes, yeah. yes, yes, flax seeds is the same yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And try to get, t t get them organic as well. Right. And it's just literally, you know, they look like these sesame seeds and they're kind of brown. And they're um, sometimes you can find them in a powder form. Try to get them in a whole form because right. you want the skin to get softer and that's how it's more valuable. So that's just something very simple that you can do. Just a spoonful of linseeds every day. Yeah, that's great. I did. I was, I was doing that. I don't do that now, but I was doing that when I was living in London and, and working with her. Um, yeah, I started doing it again. It does mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. You forget those things and um, it does help. Another thing that's helpful, um, are, um, cold water fish. Uh -huh. like, like sardines, herring, salmon, mackerel. These are high fish that are high in omega-3s and anti-inflammatory and have antidepressant um, qualities. Uh, also a good source of vitamin D. It's mm. hard to get aside from sunlight. Um, that's another thing is that most Americans are vitamin D deficient. deficient. And, you know, it, it, it's worth when you go for your physical and getting, uh, paying attention to asking when you get your blood drawn, um, really paying attention to uh, these things like vitamin D, vitamin B, um, your iron levels. Um, Cause it, these are things that we can, it's not hard to do something uh, about take, changes in our diet and taking a good vitamin B supplement makes a lot of difference in your energy levels, especially uh, if you're vegetarian. Yeah, I mean, if, I'm not a vegetarian, but even me, I need a good vitamin B supplement every mm -hmm. now and then. It's also for women; it's magnesium is so important right. for the hormonal balance as well, for muscles and stuff, for pain. But yeah, of that, course, Debbie takes magnesium. Yeah. Powder. Um, this is not surprising. Drink in terms of alcohol. Um, men shouldn't drink more than uh, one 
alcoholic drink per day um, and uh, women less so. And if you are going to drink, red wine is, is the best. Um, and it has something called resveratrol, uh, which is a good antioxidant uh, source. Um, it's good to know. Yeah. Um, I read something the other day. It says now the studies show that every amount of alcohol, any amount of alcohol is bad for you. Mm. I mean, it's, it makes sense. Our bodies were not designed to digest alcohol. Basically. No, it causes inflammation. And, it does, like yeah. crazy, and drives me crazy. Like if I have a glass of red wine, the next day, I, for sure, I feel bloated and I, I feel grouchy as well. You know, just a glass of wine, really. And it, of course, it got like this as I got over 45. It right. was like this always. But it does have an impact. And it happens to a lot of people that their tolerance for alcohol diminishes as we, as we get older. Um, Good to know. Yeah. So I'll summarize in terms of the nutrition, the ideal anti-cancer diet, which again, this can be applied to, I think, pretty much any health condition, organic, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, anti-inflammatory, whole foods, don't juice. Um, we need the fiber from the fruits and the vegetables. Whole grains. If you eat rice, jasmine and basmati rice and brown rice are the best. Um, again, that's related to blood sugar levels um, and as well as quinoa and millet in terms of um, grains. Um, eating heavily pigmented fruits like the darker fruits like berries, blueberries, raspberries. Plums. Um, plum, yeah. Fruits that are also that are lower in sugar. Um, cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the Brussels sprouts. Um, the dark green leafy vegetables, decreasing animal protein, um, cutting down on dairy where possible. Um, if you like dairy kefir with, with no added sugar, well, look at your ingredients. Start looking at the ingredients list because when you see sugar on the top of the ingredients list, that's usually that's a, a red flag. Um, we recently switched to goat milk. It makes a difference in digestion. I think they're not as um, mass produced, so the animals are not under that much of stress. It does help for digestion. I mean, if you if you like a bit of milk in your coffee, or you know, try uh, goat milk, and it does taste really well, actually. Or in your um, in your morning, you know, in your breakfast. I don't do well with lactose, so yeah, that would be good. Like, um, I use almond milk. Uh -huh. um, which I really like. And I eat, when I eat cheese, I try to do feta cheese. Uh -huh. eat, Less eat, processed. Um, yeah. Right. Um, so cutting down, cutting out or down on red and processed meats, another thing. Um, if you're going to eat poultry, preferably organic, um, think of how these, you know, the, these, the chickens are raised. Um, Increase your cold water fish, your omega-3s. Decrease the refined carbs, the sugar, the white flour, the white rice. Season with garlic, ging ginger, turmeric, Mediterranean spices. These are anti-inflammatory. Uh, drink lots of water, green tea, and red wine if you're going to drink alcohol. Um, so that's a summary of, of the, the nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few things in terms of supplementation. Uh, again, it's estimated that um, w over 1 billion people around the world are vitamin D deficient. So get that checked. Um, and there are certain people that are more likely to be vi vitamin D de deficient, the darker your skin, um, obesity, um, uh, heredity may also hinder production. Um, older adults may need to um, ingest more. And low vitamin D is related to depression, back pain, cancer, insulin resistance, and impaired immunity. So there's a the 25 OH vitamin D blood test that you can do when you go for your annual physical. Um, that's important to do. Um, 
also, you know, it's best to get our vitamins and minerals through our diet, but you know, um, some people are more in need, likely to need multivitamins and, or other supplements. Um, people who are dieting, strict vegans and vegetarians, people with poor, very poor diets, women who are pregnant, um, and people with conditions that with impaired digestion. Also, what you can do is um, you can take, uh, uh, for example, a multivitamin as a cure, like go for one, one pot for example mm. and then stop you, you don't have to overdo it right and you can just do for a couple of months like two three months and then stop and then see how that feels like i mean you know if you overdo this it's not going to work either you have to find that sweet spot for you you know what works and you need to be you know in line you know you need to watch for your body your response whether you feel less tired you sleep better you, you know your bowel movements are better you know things like that i think in, what about i was going to say what about the probiotics does he say anything about probiotics i think he i think so he says that he abram said that he takes a probi probiotic uh, a pre and probi probiotic like two or three times a week Hmm. So actually, I was taking a probiotic every day, and after I watched this video, I started just taking it two or three mine two or three times, um, okay, a, a week. I think um, from I mean I have a friend. Um, she's in the European uh, Oncology Nutritionist Organization, and her recommendations were like vitamin D. And probiotics mm. she says make sure you take them so it's important there is also for children there is a different i think potency for children mm. if you think your child needs it and you can you know what to look at is their bowels if they're um, not formed well if they're not going to the toilet as often as they should and things like that any abnormality is a sign of the need for probiotics i think it's important mm -hmm. yes Another interesting thing that Dr. Abrams is very into, which I had just read about in a book prior to watching the video, so for me it felt like synchronicity, like I had to explore it, was mycological nutraceuticals, which are mushrooms. Um, um, and most mushrooms work as nonspecific immo immunostimulants. Um, and you can get uh, this in supplement form. There are different types of mushrooms that are helpful for um, different conditions, um, for energy, for the immune system. And there's a site called fung fungi.com. So all this will be in the notes that I'll put below the video. Um, so that's another thing that I did because I felt like, wow, I just read about this. And then I just watched this video with this, you know, th that had nothing supposedly uh, ostensibly to do with mycological nutraceuticals, and here is this another person talking about the 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 benefits of of mushrooms. So I'm ex I'm experimenting with it. I'm taking. Uh, I I'm amazed that you can even pronounce that word. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be believing. <laughs> um, a word of caution: if you are um, your body is you have a tendency to develop candida. Mm. Uh, Alexandra had warned me. Alexandra is this lady who's a great nutritionist that we had in London, and her recommendations were always spot on. So, just a little word of caution: um, fungi can feed candida. So, mm. if you have any issues with candida, uh, be mindful of uh, using fungi supplements or eating a lot of mushrooms. Or, you know, fungi is candida. So, mushroom candida is mushrooms. So, it's yeah. fungi. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean. It, it again sort of reemphasizes you need to, this is all, there's no one size fits all with any of this, right? Yeah. yeah. And we have to take all the information um, that, we're, that, that we're given, that we hear and see, well, how is this going to work for, for me? And, yeah. you know, uh, so I did the research and I felt like this is something I want to try with the, you know, with the mycological nutraceuticals. This is something I want to try with lowering my pro probiotics and, um, and um, that works for, for me, but it's important like to be active in the process and uh, totally. get your blood work done. Talk to your doctor, talk to your, uh, if you're, if you're working with a nutritionist and do your own research.
totally. And just be mindful. I know this is a very, um, I mean, it's an overused word, but be mindful of how you feel. Like when you get off, you know, get out of the bed in the morning, do you feel better? Or does it feel like, oh, another thing you have to do? I mean, then don't do it. Because, you know, that means like it's just putting another pressure on you. We don't want to stress you. We just want to make your life easier, you know? Right. So all these recommendations are for that. And whatever feels like it's too much, then just do whatever you can. I, exactly. Even if it's one thing, even if you can drink more, say, I'm going to try and drink more water. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to try and cut down on my red meat. Um, I like blueberries. I'm going to eat more blueberries. Like anything, anything that you do like, like that can be helpful, but do it from, again, do it from a place of joy. Exactly. And don't, don't forget, I mean, nowadays we're talking about these recommendations in the 1990s, when I studied psychology undergraduate degree, I also did a, a wellness um, thing at the university. And at the time, in the 1990s, the dietary recommendations were more carbohydrates. Eat, you know, your 60% of your diet should consist of car carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Look at where we are now. And we're talking about a more balanced eating, more greens and more, you know, so it's just things can change. You know, what we know today may not be true for everyone and it may change. So be mindful of that. And, and aware of the fad. I think what you're referring to is like there are fads and there are fad diets. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the, things are always changing and um, sometimes fads are, are just fads. And um, I've seen it. I mean, this has nothing to do with diet, but um, <clears throat> my son, who, Eric, who's 13, he, um, he was into this sort of Pokemon Go thing. Uh, where you go and catch Pokemon on your phone, and then it completely died out. And then suddenly it's back again. Uh -huh. And it's so interesting. It's like how, how these things happen, how these fads spread. It's, you know, they go from nothing to everyone's doing it. And um, obviously with the internet, that it's a lot easier for things to just catch on like that. Um, so do your homework. Great. Okay. So this, hopefully this is helpful and I'll post all this. I love um, it. So people can do their own research. And, yeah. Perfect. Thank you, David. Um, Thank you so much for yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah.